My very first experience with a comic book would be when I was five years old. We rented out a room, my family did, to a, a man named Mike who was a comic book collector. And he brought comics home, read them, and gave them to me. And the first thing I thought of after reading my first comic book was, this is what I want to do for a living, age five. My name is Doug Mankey. I'm a penciler for DC Comics. Well, my five-year-old self think, yeah, he would say, yeah, you, you did it, buddy. I, I knew you would. I've worked for 17 years on nearly every major title at DC. I worked on the Superman, Batman, and The Flash, and Wonder Woman. And I've been working, by the summer, it'll have been four years on Green Lantern. The Green Lantern has been around for probably as long as I've been around. It's based around the idea that these characters called the Owens had forged rings that they would give to, to people worthy of the ring. They have to be fearless, they have to be brave. You wear the ring and then your mind is able to conjure anything that you, that you can think of. So you're limited by your imagination. These big pages, single heroes on them, or large shots of heroes, we tend to call them splash pages. And even though they're the fun ones to draw, and the ones that just about every comic book wannabe uh, artist would prefer to draw. They're, they're not really what comic book storytelling is about. I mean, I enjoy it when I get to break out in a big fight scene and raw and, you know, show two characters with cosmic powers destroying planets. But at the same time, if I'm on street level and I get to draw an old man and he's taking his grandkid for a walk, I like to do stuff like that because it has personality, it has humanity to it. My job is really to me, defined by trying to see the script come to life. When I finally get into my hands, it's broken down into pages, panels, and all the words are there. You know, and I sit down and I, I, I pour over the script and I, I methodically go through and I make notes and I try to compile a list of the things that I'll need image-wise. And then I just sit down and I start laying out pages. I'm not always thinking about a finished figure, but I'm thinking about how a, how a page is weighed. I try not to be redundant. So for example, if, if something is in the foreground and pushed to the edges, unless there's a specific reason to repeat that, I'll, I'll often like slightly tilt something, take a different perspective on it, move it over so it's not perfectly down the middle. Working through and creating a good composition on a page, in other words, one that is visually fun to look at, easy and it flows, not distracting, but the eye naturally follows a, a frame of motion through from the first panel down to the last one. Is, is really important to me in trying to, uh, to get that down right as soon as possible before I start truly fleshing in characters. So at first they really just look like you know, amorphous shapes as I, I put weight on the page. After that, I start in on details. From my hands then, they're sent directly to an inker. Then the colorist sits and does whatever magic that they do uh, using Photoshop. And then it goes to the printer and shipped all over the world from there. We're just busy trying to trick people. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to pull emotion out by the stagnant image that you see in front of you and make people feel like they're seeing something moving. Here we have Sinestro and Hal Jordan, both guns blazing as the villain has destroyed their construct. And then the eerie, creepy panel as he's overpowered and, and leering and, and frightful. And then when we have Hal with grim determination, we pull the, the shot in nice and tight. So we get a, a, a shot of his ring coming forward, looking over his knuckles, you know, giving this illusion or this feeling of something coming right at you hard and fast. There are all kinds of little tricks that I use personally. I, you know, if I have a large menacing character, it's not bad enough looking up, but if you turn the angle just right, then it's intimidating.
find me grabbing my mirror a lot as I draw, looking for uh, errors in symmetry and, and uh, composition. And I see something here I'd like to change. So I sit here and I nip and I tuck and I trim a little off of his head on one side, add a little bit to the other, like a sculptor, you know. When I look at my responsibility in my job, and that is to tell a good story, the people I'm really thinking about most are the fans. Comic book fans are a very dedicated bunch, and they take their collecting, they take their interest in the, the medium very seriously. I want to give them something worthwhile, so at the very least I know that I've given it my best. It's fun business. It's comics. I get up in the morning and I wear the same slippers comfortably down to my studio and sit down and draw for a living. I'm always really excited that time of the month when I go, oh, you know, the truck should be pulling up and they should be dropping off the latest comic. I can't wait to see it in print. You know, that's exciting. Do I consider myself lucky? Yeah, I'm absolutely lucky. It's amazing to me to think that I'm actually doing what I, at five years old, wanted to do. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.